गुड मॉर्निंग डियर स्टूडेंट डियर स्टूडेंट्स एज यू ऑल आर फैमिलियर डैट वी आर गोइंग थ्रू विथ अवर फिफ्थ चैप्टर कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ इकोनॉमी इन दिस चैप्टर वी स्टडेड इन अवर प्रीवियस वीडियो वट इज इंडियन इकोनॉमी वट आर दी कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ इंडियन इकोनॉमी एज अ अंडर डेवलप्ड इकोनॉमी इंडिया एज अ मिक्सड इकोनॉमी डियर स्टूडेंट टूडे वी विल डिस्कस दीज थ्री टॉपिक्स इंडिया एज अ डेवलपिंग इकोनॉमी India as a planned economy and India as a federal economy. So, dear student, let's let's start with our first topic: India as a developing economy. Dear student, as you all are familiar that our economy is a developing economy. Okay, if you consider our economy, if you see our economy from uh, a previous point of view or the from its previous experiences, so you will easily find out that after. independence there are so many measures there are so many steps taken by our government so that we will join the developing path like the five year plans initiated by the government like different poverty alleviation programs different uh, social reforms programs okay different taxations uh, reform programs so all these are different programs and plannings done by our government so that we can join the path of development okay and we sh- we surely join the path okay if you see the data if you see the previous data you will easily find out that how we go through with the uh, you know within even within these 50 years that how much we grow from our uh, from the time of independence to our current time so there is a long path which we traveled and there are still there is a long path which we have to go to achieve a status of a developed nation okay so let's start dear student if you talk about india a developing uh, economy we have the following points which we have to keep in mind the first one is increase in national income and per capita income dear dear student as you all are familiar that national income or if you talk about national income it means gdp gross domestic product so gross domestic product or national income is the indicator of uh, development it is the indicator of measuring growth or development of a country so if the national income of a country is increasing it simply means the country is in the path of growth okay so if so if we can see that from past few years from past independent or the post independent period our gdp is growing in a good pace so according to m mukherjee the annual growth rate of real per capita income during 1957 1956 was just 0.8% but since the beginning of planning our per capita income has increased at the rate of 2% per annum rate of increase in national income has been around 4.0% per annum thus the long spell of stagnation was broken during planning period so student you can see that by the data given by professor m mukherjee okay he is uh, he is one of the uh, prominent uh, economists in our country he who is considered as a uh, uh, you know as a uh, providing as a uh, gdp as a good indicator okay he he really did hard uh, hard work or he really did good work in the uh, previous time in our pre independent time okay so the data given by professor uh, mukherjee is one of the most authentic data so according to professor mukherjee as you can see that our real per capita income during 1957 is 0.5 but our per capita income is increasing at a, a rate of 2% which is a indicator of a developing economy so we really did a good job in the past a few year or in the long spell of time because dear student at the time of british economy when uh, when our economy is dominated by the uh, british okay uh, at that time our economy is at a stagnant pace we have only agriculture as the main Uh, economic uh, sector and if you talk about tertiary and manufacturing sector then there is nothing we have we have only few portion of uh, we have only few uh, okay we have, we can say that the contribution by these two sectors is very less as compared to the agriculture sector so increase in national income and per capita income Mm, is the point we can say that our economy is a developing economy the second point is increase in the rate of capital formation dear student capital formation play a key key role in the economic development of a country it 
इंक्रीज प्रोडक्शन एंड प्रोडक्टिविटी इन एग्रीकल्चर इंडस्ट्री माइनिंग ओके प्लांटेशन एक्सेट्रा ड्यूरिंग द प्लानिंग पीरियड रेट ऑफ कैपिटल फॉर्मेशन हैज सिग्निफिकेंटली इंक्रीज रेट ऑफ कैपिटल फॉर्मेशन डिपेंड अपॉन रेट ऑफ सेविंग एंड इन्वेस्टमेंट डेयर स्टूडेंट ऑलवेज कीप इन माइंड एट द कैपिटल फॉर्मेशन लाइक इंक्रीज इन प्लांट मशीनरीज फैक्ट्रीज बिल्डिंग्स ओके सो बाय इंक्रीजिंग दीज वी कैन इंक्रीज अवर एग्रीकल्चर वी कैन इंक्रीज अवर इंडस्ट्री सेक्टर वी कैन इंक्रीज अवर माइनिंग सेक्टर ओके सो वी कैन सी डेट ड्यूरिंग द प्रीवियस पीरियड और ड्यूरिंग द पास फ्यू फ्यू ईयर्स और फ्यू डेकेट्स द रेट ऑफ कैपिटल फॉर्मेशन इंक्रीज इन अवर कंट्री विच इज़ गुड एज अज अ इफ यू कंसिडर इंडिया एज अ डेवलपिंग इकोनॉमी सो इट इज़ वन ऑफ द गुड इंडिकेटर डेट आवर कैपिटल फॉर्मेशन इज इंक्रीजिंग एंड इन अ रेगुलर इंटरवल ऑफ टाइम ओके इन इंडिया द रेट ऑफ कैपिटल फॉर्मेशन इंक्रीजेस फ्रॉम 9.3 परसेंट इन 1950 टू 33.3 परसेंट इन 2015 एंड 16 ओके सो वी कैन सी डेट इंडिया इज अ डेवलपिंग इकोनॉमी बिकॉज आवर कैपिटल फॉर्मेशन इज आल्सो इंक्रीजिंग ओके आवर नेशनल इनकम एंड पर कैपिटल इनकम इज आल्सो इंक्रीजिंग नाउ द नेक्स्ट पॉइंट इज एग्रीकल्चर डेवलपमेंट ओके Our plan has contributed to the development of agriculture in the following way. Since the beginning of planning in 1951, improvement in yield per hectare of land is the most important indicator of our agriculture progress. The increase in productivity has been experienced by all our major crops. For example, our average per hectare our average per hectare production of wheat has increased from 663 kg in 1951 to 3216 kg in 2016 and 17 so you can see that student there is a tremendous increase in the production of wheat okay in 2017 18 we are one of the uh, uh, top country in the production of wheat and rice okay we have a bumper production of uh, wheat and rice in our e economy during the period of uh, 17 and 18 so we can say that india is a, a developing economy on the basis of these data okay now next point is industrial progress industrial progress during the planning period becomes evident from the following point okay the first one is during the whole planning period the overall industry growth rate has been about 6% per annum so you can see that the industrial growth rate is very good in our uh, economy after the pre independence period dear student after the independence there uh, there was a five year plan launched by our indian government okay which is launched by the planning commission during the uh, initially in the five year plans in the second third and fourth five year plan we focus towards the industrial sector micro industry sector and in our ninth and tenth five year plan we focus towards the large industrial industry sector so that's why the industrial progress uh, is very good in our country if you talk about the post independent period so now if you see the data of today's scenario you will find that the contribution by the services sector in your gdp is the top and the contribution by the industrial sector is come into the second position and the last one is your uh, agriculture sector so you can see that the mostly the contribution is given by the industry and services sector in your gdp although most of the people are engaged in the agriculture activities still still most of the people in our economy in our country are engaged in agriculture activity but the contribution by the agriculture activity is not that much in gdp that that is given by the industry and services sector okay dear student next point is india's industrial structure during the planning period has been stronger and diversified okay she has attained self sufficiency in almost all all uh, consumer goods okay there has been phenomenal growth of the capital good and basic industries example iron steel machinery machine chemical fertilizer so we did a tremendous good job in these industries and now we are self sufficient in most of uh, these industries we can produce steel machines chemical fertilizer so we are india is considered as a developing economy the next point is development of infrastructure during the planning period infrastructure has developed considerably 
ओके पावर जनरेशन कैपेसिटी हैज इंक्रीज सिग्निफिकेंटली दियर हैज बीन अ लॉट ऑफ इम्प्रूवमेंट इन रोड्स रेलवेज सी पोर्ट्स एयरपोर्ट्स एयरवेज टेलीकॉम्युनिकेशन बैंकिंग इंश्योरेंस ओके सो ऑल दीज सेक्टर वर ग्रो आफ्टर द प्री इंडिपेंडेंट पीरियड ओके आफ्टर द पोस्ट इंडिपेंडेंट पीरियड and if you talk about before independence there is no uh, no such of these facilities are available in our country and if they were that they were only for the british britishers okay so the development of infrastructure is also a uh, indicator of the developing nation now next part is development of social sector dear student social services like health education have expanded the considerably e considerably okay there has been a large increase in the number of hospitals dispensaries doctor and nurses as a result of this death rate has fallen from 40.8 per 1951 to 6.4% per 2016 so you can see that how the data how the data was changed during the past year that initially 40.8% per person in per 1000 died uh, were dead in 1956 but in 2016 it was only 6.4% okay so this is the indicator of development that we are in the phase of developing okay now we are uh, we are developing as a nation next is literacy rate increases from 18.3% in 1951 to 76% in 2016 so we can see that our infrastructure is developing our social sector like hospital doctors dispensary nurses increasing and the number is increasing we can see that our literacy rate is increasing so we are in a developing phase okay dear student so we can see that uh, we can say that india is a developing economy because of these point because of increase in rate of capital formation agriculture development development of social sector development of infrastructure okay development of industrial progress because of these india is a developing nation now move to our next point which is india a planned economy dear student under the chosen path of mixed economy you all are familiar that our indian economy is a mixed economy so under the chosen path of mixed economy in economic planning in a democratic setup was given due importance in our economy okay since 1951 planning commission of india which is known as niti aayog after 2015 okay initially it was known as with the name of planning commission okay and all the five year plans were given by the planning commission okay and again uh, but after 2015 it was known as with the new name of new name given by prime minister narendra modi as niti aayog okay dear student so national target so national if you talk about uh, national uh, target so national target was regarded to agriculture and industrial growth rate are fixed okay dear student and fund are allocated to achieve these target with a specific time systematic attempts are undertaken to implement such targets okay there are different targets given by our indian government our planning commission which we have to achieve in a due course of time okay and so many targets we already achieved okay and so many targets we are going to achieve in our upcoming days okay all these targets are set by the planning commission niti aayog okay so we can see that india as a planned economy because all our development all our uh, five year plans were uh, given by our indian economy in a constructive way in a planned way though indian government has been emphasizes more on market economy but still our government is more emphasizing on market economy because you all know that all the price of a commodity is decided by the market economy like the market forces Uh, which is known as demand and supply forces so government uh, mostly tried uh, tried do not interfere in our uh, economy okay do not interfere in our economy they they want that economy should be work as a free economy okay dear student now Uh, government has been emphasizes more on market economy with less inter- intervention by the government in the economic activity since 1991 economic planning is still consider necessary to overcome some of the chronic economic problem like poverty unemployment in india so we have we need the economic planning so that we can come out from all these 
issues like poverty like unemployment so we need a proper planning that's why indian economy is sometimes considered as a planned economy because all our decisions were planned by the planning commission niti ayog and different organizations and bodies of the government in a very planned manner okay you can see that different policies different programs were initiated by the government in a planned way we have certain targets which we have to complete we have certain uh, targets or or uh, or uh, you know a benchmarks with which we have to achieve so that we can grow or we can join the path of development and we can become a developed nation so dear student we can see that india is also a planned economy now our last point last part of today is india as a federal economy okay now dear student you all are familiar with the term federal federal means when there is something which is in the constitutional way okay so if you talk about india as a federal economy our constitution has accepted a federal setup for the country hence indian economy is a federal economy okay federal economy implies that the government economic activity okay whatever economic activity performed by government are carried into two level one is central one is state level okay you all are familiar that in the central level it is conducted by the central government and in the state level it is conducted by the state government okay so whatever policy or initiatives or whatever plan is taken place or whatever the new plan is taken place it is done by the a central or state level that's why we can we consider india as a federal economy sometime now indian now indian constitution clearly he classified the power of the two government regarding the regulation and control of the economic life of people so in our constitution the rights and the regulation or duties of the central and state government is already mentioned okay dear student already their rule their regulations their right is already mentioned in our constitution so they have to follow or they followed the indian constitution okay so that they can ensure that whatever rights they have whatever power they have whatever regulations they have okay and they guide according to these rule and regulation which is mentioned in our constitution okay there are certain departments which are in the control of central and state government for example indian railway post telegraph atomic power plant etc come under the control of central government all these are the part of our central government and on the other hand activities like education health electricity irrigation road transport etc come under the judiciary of state government so state government can take decisions regarding all these activity like your education health electricity irrigation road transport etc uh, your state government take decisions regarding all these uh, you know uh, all these indicators but if you talk about these indicators then only the central government take decisions like indian railways like post like telegraph like atomic power plant atomic power plants okay all these uh, areas are out of the reach of state government okay there is the direct intervention of the central government only so with this you can see that india is sometime work as a federal economy because in our economy in our country we have the constitution and we have to follow that particular constitution and according to constitution our indian economy or according to the constitution we have uh, two things okay we have uh, two levels one is central and one is state and all their duties their regulation are already mentioned in uh, the constitution so they have to follow the constitution that's why india is considered a federal economy so student that's it for today we have completed our chapter 5th okay chapter 5th is completed in our next video we will go through with chapter 6 or we will start our new chapter which is chapter 6 okay thank you student stay safe stay healthy